Hey guys, it's Real Low Bermuda here, bringing you another lawn care video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about fertilizer. What does NPK mean? What does one pound of nitrogen mean? What does it do for your yard? How many times should you put it down? How often, how much, all the basics. So hang with us, it's gonna be a great video. Let's roll that intro. So just like your body uh, needs nutrients to survive, so does your lawn. And just like your body can have a nutrient deficiency, so can your lawn. And you know your soil and your turf grass, they're both living organisms and they need special attention on a regular basis. And so the typical homeowner, uh, no fault of their own, they go down to your local hardware store, you know, buy a bag of just your basic, uh, you know, lawn fertilizer, weed and feed, and the directions say put it down once in the spring, once in the summer, once in the fall. So three times a year you're feeding your lawn. And if you think about most climates, there's all sorts of things that happen uh, during those nine months of the year, right? You have you know, long periods of drought. Sometimes you have heavy flooding rains, um, not to mention you have a lot of foot traffic on your lawn. You have, you're mowing your lawn, especially if you're using a rotary mower that basically acts like a vacuum and like sucks things up and cuts. And so you have all this potential for the three feedings a year that you put down that those feedings are actually not gonna get into the soil and actually feed the turf that you're trying to improve. And so most of the time, that's not gonna be enough. You know, feeding your body three times over a nine month period wouldn't be enough. Just like feeding your lawn is not gonna be enough. And so today we're gonna to talk about what should you be feeding your lawn? Um, you know, what does NPK mean? and what other things does your lawn need besides nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium? Uh, how do you know how much to put? Um, could you put too much? You know, do you risk endangering your lawn? A lot of people are, are really worried about all these things, and so that's why they'll go down and just put that basic one bag down, they'll throw it down once in the spring, they'll throw it down once in the summer, if they even do it that many times, just because people have so many questions and they, they don't wanna mess it up. And so today we're gonna to try to clear some of that up, uh, make it a little bit easier for you to understand what you can do, what you should do when you're putting down fertilizer to feed that lawn. So my first recommendation would be to go online and look for your local extension office uh, in your state, uh, your agriculture, uh, agricultural extension office. So in Texas, uh, that's done through the University of A&M, and they have put together a specific Bermuda grass guide that will tell you in general in the state of Texas uh, how much nitrogen, um, you know, phosphorus and potassium to put down each year. Now, keep in mind that's general guidelines based on you know very generic conditions across the state. However, they are pretty good and they're pretty um, they're they're very usable information. And so uh, on on their website, they talk about fertilizing, and they say that it's recommended that you put down one pound of N, which is nitrogen, every four to six weeks. And so most people across the board will follow that general guideline and they'll put down one pound of nitrogen 
per thousand feet of square per uh, one thousand square feet of lawn every month. So one pound of in every month. So my yard, for example, is three thousand square feet. So that means I would put down three pounds of nitrogen every month. And that can be done different ways. Like I've mentioned before, I, I really think that it's good to do spoon feeding. What that means is you, instead of putting down a big giant pound of nitrogen all at once, I divide that up into smaller segments. And so typically what I'll do is a half a pound every two weeks. Sometimes if I'm really eager, I'll even do a quarter pound every week. But the more, the, the more frequent you can put down nutrients, the better your chances of success are, right? Now you don't, that doesn't mean you put down a lot of nutrients frequently. You just put down, you still put down that one pound every single month. Um, but you just put it down, you know, in small doses. And what that does is it makes sure that the soil can absorb that. And then if you do have erratic climate conditions, that wash away what you put down or it gets damaged because you have a big get together in the yard or whatever it may be uh, you're going to put down some more nutrients the next week or the next two weeks and so it's just a great rule of thumb and so another thing that it talks about is how to divide up or how to determine you know how much nitrogen is in a bag of fertilizer that you're using like for example if you buy a 50 pound bag of fertilizer and it says 640 well how do you know do you put down three pounds of that bag well obviously not because you know three pounds of that bag um, is nowhere near three pounds of nitrogen because remember that that bag only has six percent nitrogen in it and so we're going to talk about next how to calculate how much nitrogen you would put down to achieve that one pound per month all right so it's really not a complicated process to calculate how much nitrogen to put down in a bag so what you do is you take 100 and you divide that by the first number on that bag. So again, the first number is your N, your nitrogen. So take a bag of melorganite, for example, it's a 640. So you would take the 100, divide it by six, which would give you a total of 16.7. So that's 16.7 pounds of that bag would be nitrogen. All right, so I would need 16.7 pounds per 1,000 square feet. So 16.7 pounds, this is, again, this is melorganite, it'd be different for your bag, whatever you're using, but 16.7 per 1,000 square feet. My lawn is 3,000 square feet. So I'd need three times that amount, which comes out to about 50 pounds to equal one pound of nitrogen for my whole yard. So I would need 50 pounds of melorganite per month to get the right amount of nitrogen, all right? And so if I'm gonna do that twice a month, I would only need to put 25 pounds down at a time. And so then what you can do is you look at your spreader settings, like on my Earthway spreader, in order to put down 25 pounds of product, I, need, I know I use like spreader setting 20. I think that's what it is off the top of my head. Uh, or what some people can do is like, what I'll, you can pour uh, your your fertilizer into like a five gallon bucket and then use some sort of a scale like I actually have a fish scale that I would weigh it and that way I make sure that I'm only putting 25 pounds into that spreader and then again you could calibrate if you don't know your numbers Earthways calibration is nearly perfect it's spot on so you would set it on 20 
And if you did perfect passes through the yard, you would be out of fertilizer right at the end of your yard. But that takes a little bit of practice with whatever, whatever spreader you're using and so forth. But at least you know if you put down an exact amount of pounds over an exact amount of square feet, you know that you're, you're putting down the right amount. But one of the great things too about Melorganite is that you can't really screw it up. And I've talked about this before, but if you put down two pounds a month, you know, obviously you wouldn't want to do that, but I mean, it's a waste of money and you're putting down way too much growth into the yard. So it's just unnecessary, but it doesn't hurt anything. And that's what's great for the average homeowner is that you don't have to worry about messing it up. If you put down, um, put it down four times a month, or if you put it down four times a year, you're going to get better results than what you had before. And you're not going to mess anything up in the process. And so that's why it's really easy. Um, and there's, there's a lot of fertilizers that are similar to that, but you do have some fertilizers that can do some harm. Like if you're putting down straight ammonium, uh, ammonium sulfate, uh, which is just straight quick release nitrogen, it'll work really fast. Like it'll work the next day almost. However, if you put down too much of it, and if it's too hot outside, then you can burn your lawn. And so that's something that typically the average homeowner wouldn't use. Uh, and that's why a lot of homeowners like the slow release fertilizers. And so we'll talk about that uh, for a second as well. So typically with a slow release fertilizer, and that's going to be your most common, what you find in most stores. Uh, ultimately, it's your urea is probably coming from, I'm sorry, your nitrogen is coming from urea. Uh, we don't need to really talk about what that what that is. It's just the most common form of nitrogen that you'll get in most bags. And it's going to be coated. And that coating, what happens is, is it breaks down slowly over time. And as that coating breaks down, you can keep in mind, this is like the size of a BB, right? So it's a really small prill, uh, then it's coated. And as it breaks down, the nitrogen escapes from that prill over time. And, you know, the like I mentioned earlier in the video, there's no way that that's going to last three months, right? It just, it's just not going to happen. Uh, and so, but even over time, slow release, after about two weeks, it starts to really release well. But by the end of, in my opinion, four weeks, you're going to stop seeing results. And that's why it's important at minimum to apply a slow release a slow release fertilizer every month. So that way it's breaking down for about two weeks, it's feeding for two weeks, then you're reapplying. And so that way, and so what I what I do is I put a little bit down every two weeks. That way I feel like as some as some of it is expiring, the other is kicking in and so forth. And then I also use some liquid fertilizers and everything else, which which I'll talk about in another video. But ultimately, um, if you use a quick release fertilizer, what that means is that's just straight nitrogen that's not coated, which means it's going to be available immediately to the to the leaf. And so that's a good thing as long as you're careful with what you put down. And so usually when I'm putting down straight ammonium nitrate or ammonium sulfate, what I'll do is I'll put down a quarter a pound at, per thousand feet at a time and that way uh, I never risk burning the lawn. I've never once burned my lawn with it uh, just putting down little amounts and because it's so little you know you could come back again in a week or two weeks and apply more. You see good results you come back and apply more as needed. So so far we really only talked about the N out of the NPK formula and that's because typically most uh, most everything you're going to base your decisions on is going to be based on the nitrogen. However, um, when we talk about the P and the K, the phosphorus and the potassium, it's really important at that point to get a soil test done, in my opinion. That being said, you're, like, my local extension office gives a general recommendation of a an MPK rating of a 3-1-2 ratio. So that's three parts nitrogen, one part phosphorus, two parts potassium. And so an example of that would be like a 15-5-10 on a typical bag at the store, a 21-7-14. So those numbers hopefully that might have used to not made any sense to you are starting to make a little bit more sense to you now. Um, and we'll look at some, some pictures of some different fertilizers here in a little bit. Um, but ultimately, let's talk about getting a soil test. So last year, I had a soil test done, and it was really helpful because I was able to see what my 
soil was lacking and what it had maybe a little bit too much of. And so uh, I'll put up on the screen here and we can take a look at it. Let me get to my get to my soil test but one of the biggest things in a soil test that you're going to get is your pH like your is your soil acidic or is it alkaline um, and mine because of where I live in the Texas hill country we've got a lot of limestone a lot of rocky soil and even the water is really um, filled with calcium and so my pH was actually at an 8.0 uh, and we'll talk about what you know what that means but ultimately you know you're, you're typically wanting somewhere in the neighborhood of probably six to eight and a half somewhere in that neighborhood mine's a little bit on the uh, high on the alkaline side but um, what I was able to see with that soil test and you can see here on the screen uh, but ultimately uh, I was a little low in Nit uh, sorry, the nitrogen, they don't usually put nitrogen on there because again, it's used up so quickly by the soil, but I was a little low in nitrate, uh, a little, little low in phosphorus, and right about where I needed to be for the potassium. So I know I didn't need to do too much, but they still gave me a recommendation of per 1,000 feet, a half a pound of nitrate, almost a full pound of phosphorus, and almost seven tenths of a pound of potassium per 1,000 feet. So what I did is I went ahead and just bought a bag of like 13, 13, 13, which was pretty even across the board and applied that a couple times last year and got pretty good results from it. Also on the soil test, I'm able to see how much iron, how much sodium and sulfur, things like that. So all those little nutrients, it's just kind of like when you go to the, the doctor and you get a blood test and they look at all your minerals and they look at your electrolytes and all those things. Uh, because there's a balance that the body needs in order to be really thriving and your lawn's the same way. And so a soil test is very inexpensive. And actually, I sent mine to that same extension office. I think it costs 29 bucks. And I'll do a separate video on like how to do a soil test, but they have directions on their website. You send it off and then about two weeks later, you get a report. And so it's very helpful. And then it's something also you could do multiple times a year so like let's say that you wanted to see after three months what kind of progress have you made and you can send off another soil sample and you can see have you been making a difference in your soil i prefer to do mine once every year just to kind of just to kind of make sure that things are on track but usually by now i've kind of got it figured out i can tell if there's some deficiencies or not so this is an example of your basic recommendation by your extension office. So it's the three, one, two ratio, three parts nitrogen, one part phosphorus, two parts potassium. Uh, this is a Lesco. You can usually find it at Lowe's. It's pretty inexpensive and it does a really good job. And if you can see on this one, it says it's formulated for Texas lawns um, because the Texas extension, the agriculture extension office recommends that, right? So uh, you can't really go wrong with something like that as well. So you put that down, uh, you still want to do your 100 divided by 15 to determine how much nitrogen you're going to put down, whether you're going to put down a quarter pound, a half a pound, or you're going to put down the full pound. And so, uh, but anyway, I hope this is starting to make sense and you can feel free to comment in the, the video there and ask questions. Um, also do me a favor, as always, if you haven't subscribed, I'm really trying to build this channel and your subscription is free and it's very helpful and so just hit that subscribe button and then turn on the notification bell and that way anytime I post a future lawn video which is usually at least once a week sometimes twice a week you'll get a notification and especially for those of you living in Texas and those of you living in warm with warm weather grasses uh, that's kind of what my focus is on is, is how to help you be successful with your turf and as we get into these warmer and warmer months um, it's, it becomes you know information becomes critical in order to help your lawn thrive when we get up into the 90s and the hundreds and then even you know above 100 degrees so thanks for supporting my channel I hope you enjoyed the video and with each consecutive video I'll get in more and more detail on you know advanced lawn care